Hey guys, this is Dave with Ancient Amnesia and Angster Management. Angster Management is my astrophotography page. Ancient Amnesia is a page that Josh Kintai created and you're all members of. And uh, we really want to thank you for being there. Josh does a great job um, putting all kinds of really interesting stuff up there that pretty much everybody likes. Nothing controversial, just really cool stuff. So we got to thank him for that. Um, I was getting ready to put this thing together today with a new part that I got and I thought I'm not a big video guy, but what the heck, man, let's make a video of me putting this thing together and I'll explain it to you as we go. So basically I got my entire telescope apart in pieces. This is just the tripod, there's nothing else on here, there's a little bracket that holds it together, so that's there by itself. Um, usually the telescope mounts on this and it has the arm that goes around, you'll see that in a minute. What happens is that moves left to right, north and south, east and west, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it doesn't have the ability to track the sky in an arc. Um, it's, you know, it can be a little jittery, and then you get star trailing. So in your longer exposure pictures, what happens is your, your stars start to look like you know, pills. They get a little bit longer, or they even get really long if you're you know, trying to overexpose like 30 seconds or more without the uh, equatorial mount. You know, it's going to make your picture look like crap, and uh, you're going to wish you hadn't even bothered putting in the effort to take it and being out there all night doing it. So that's what I've been doing for a few months now, just kind of practicing, getting, you know, shorter exposures down pat, figuring out how to zoom in on things, read the maps, understand the lingo and the terminology. And I finally came to the realization uh, through the help of a lot of people, Astro Backyard, uh, Nico over at Nebula Photos, thank you. Um, you guys have all kind of steered me into the direction of where I need the equatorial mount to get the longer exposures to get better pictures. Um, you can just you can really step up your game with something like this. Now, some of your higher end telescopes, this is pretty nice. There's some that have a mount that does all of this, but you're talking $1,000, $1,500 more at the beginner's level. When you really get up high, you're looking at $10,000 for a telescope amount and the brackets and everything and all the accessories. Um, so to add a $350 piece to a $2,000 telescope rig, that's nothing You know, for me to get way better pictures. And I love sharing these pictures with you guys. You've seen some of them. Um, and I want to just share better pictures. I want to get better. I want to uh, improve my game and I want everybody to join along with me. So uh, I'll give you my Instagram links and everything at the end, the link to my Facebook page. Um, Y'all know Ancient Amnesia, you're here. So I'm going to just kind of put this thing together and explain it as we go. So with a Celestron telescope, kind of the, it's not the rule, it's not in the book. This leg faces north, it has the label on it. I don't know, I guess it's sort of like a ritual. So when you see the label, that's where you're going to face north. So when you put your mount down, you want to have that facing north as well. So we take this little mount. This is the end that faces north. So what you do is you just line this up over these three captive screws that are under here. And this is like so simple. This is crazy. You can do it in the dark. I know I can. Well, let's put telescopes together. So just kind of snug them down. This is what you go through every night if you take it apart. Sometimes I feel like Iron Man and I'll carry the whole damn thing out there, but it's 65, 70 pounds for the whole rig. I can get a little old, so this is kind of a fun part of doing it. You can do this before it gets dark. It gives you something to do. So you just kind of tighten these down. All of this Celestron hardware, I don't know what it is they do to it. You don't need lock washers. You don't really need to crank down on it with wrenches. It's really amazing stuff. So. Now that that is mounted securely to the tripod, this is facing the north direction with that leg. Then what we got to do is we got to make sure that this piece is aligned with that. Because if this is facing north and this is off a little bit, it's just going to still star trail and this was just wasted money. So they make it super easy. You just loosen up three screws. One, two, three. And these are a big old Allen key. You can't miss them. Even the clumsiest person with the biggest sausage fingers can't mess this up. All right. So those are all loose. And then what you do is you just kind of grab these little guys and you loosen them up. And you eyeball down that leg. And you can kind of steer this thing whichever way you want by turning these knobs the, the exact same way. And it is super accurate. Now you want to eyeball this. If you're not really good at eyeballing stuff, find someone in the house who sees really good and doesn't wear glasses or has a good depth of perception. Now once you get this lined up with that leg, it doesn't have to be perfect. You crank these the opposite way, tightens right up. Then you just tighten these three Allen screws lightly. In telescopes, you really don't tighten anything down all the way because what happens is 
when you're outside, you've got cold air, you've got warm equipment, it just seizes up. And then when you come in and you try to take it apart and clean it, do whatever you got to do to take stuff apart, it sticks. Especially uh, lenses and, and uh, adapters and T-rings for your camera and stuff with those fine threads. So we just snug it. No need to crank down on that thing. So, basically, hey baby, what's up? Gypsy, come in and visit. Hey Gypsy, say hi. Hey everybody, woo! All right, go on, bro. Go get you in. So basically, what this thing does is it takes a telescope, it sits straight up and down, and it turns it. And then when this is facing north, I'll actually point this north because this is how we're gonna orient it when I use it in the backyard. That's about perfect on north right there. The sky in my yard is moving like this. So, as it's moving like this, your telescope is on an angle and able to move with it. If the telescope is flat, it has to track it in steps. And what happens is those steps get incrementally more rough or more out of whack. Um, yeah, exactly. That's my bird, Athena. Um, she agrees. And what happens is you get trails and it just messes up all your pictures. So this way, yeah, you're right. So this way, it takes the whole mount, tips it over at a set latitude. You have to get your latitude for where you live. Adjust that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So now that we're facing perfectly north, two knobs, boom, boom, and you got this big guy right here. And watch what happens here with this thing as I do this. It just moves down, or it moves up. In relation to the latitude, the azimuth is this way. Then you put the telescope on here, and then it's able to do an alignment. Celestron actually has it to where it will do what's called a wedge align. It recognizes this piece because this is a Celestron piece, and it goes through a specific alignment process. So let's bolt that tube on here and get that control arm on first. And you know, this is slow. When you do this out in the backyard every night, it takes you a few minutes to do it. Now what you want to do is face them out. Boom. You want this arm to start off on the left. So I've got the captive screw in here. You just leave that in there. And you can see there's a notch right there. That's so that when you're holding this big old sucker up, you don't have to do it to get those bolts in. You just slide it in like that. And these are captive. And you line that up until one of those hits. And Celestron's got this down to a science. It is perfect. Three knobs. You don't tighten them like one really hard at one time. You smug them all up. Okay, then you start here. Give it a little snug. A little snug. A little snug. Boom. Now, I need to be at 27.54. 27 minutes, whatever you want to call it, seconds. On this scale, it goes from 20 to, I think it says 60. No, it's 90. So, I'm at 27.54, so this thing's starting out Right there about 30. I'm going to use my glasses because this is where you don't want to really eyeball it too much, but you're going to have to a little. You loosen these and then you just bring this guy. I'm just going to park it right at 28 and then just go a hair past it because 27.54 speaking latitude wise, I mean, you might not hit the pass, but you'll hit the island. All right. Right about there. Boom. I'm going to tighten these down, snug. These have little bushings on them, really crank them because that's going to keep that thing from, if you bump it, all right? And then, before you do anything, you don't want to just walk away. This piece is also a third structural part. You just want to take that, kind of take the forward and backward motion to where it stops each way. Make sure that it's kind of floating free, and then you just tighten it just till it snugs up. And now that is actually part of the structure of the thing, too. So now comes the part that's real fun, where you bring the 20-pound telescope in, and you set that sucker right in that groove. And this thing is no slouch when it comes to being heavy. If you've ever bought a telescope, you know that you carry it like a baby. Now I kind of remember where this goes, but there's a specific adjustment that you would do ordinarily. But I kind of know where it goes. It's 
so I know where to set it. So I just get it kind of snug there, let it go real slow. Because if you mess something up, that thing's going down. Then you come around the side here, get like a baby again. What I'm going to do with this arm. And then you crank down on this knob. Now, if you're not real strong, like if you're not real confident in your finger strength, just call somebody who is and have them come over and help you put this thing together, and then they'll have fun watching this, watching the sky with you. All right. So now we got all our wires just hanging off the viewfinder here. That's what I do when I'm lazy and it's three in the morning, and I'm just ready to go in. So we got that there. You just kind of double check that. Give it another crank. Now what's going to happen is as the sky goes this way, this amount is perfectly aligned to spin with it. So you've got a third point of reference for the computer. It's like basically like doubling your RAM, quadrupling your gigabytes to a laptop. Now this thing knows exactly where to go. It'll make a third of the adjustments because of this. So you'll have less adjusting, less star trails. Your stars will be perfectly pinpointed. And then when you see those nebulas, um, you don't want any blur in a nebula because a nebula is already blurry. And if this thing is moving, it, you know, it's going to make Orion look just like a cloud. You know, you want, you want to get sharp. You want to get in there. So that's why we use an equatorial mount. And if you use the equatorial mount, you're, you're going to be able to get at least 30, 45 second exposures, no problem. 60 seconds on certain angles, you'll learn, you know, different ways of setting it up to where you'll get longer exposures. But I'm looking at going like 45 to 60 seconds at the very most, no more than a minute. And um, it's a great Celestron product too, so, you know, I don't think I wasted my money. So I can't wait to get this thing out here. The rain is coming down pretty good right now, but I think in a couple of days we're going to have clear skies at night. And I'm going to come out with some really cool photography here coming soon. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching. This is, uh, I'm Dave. I am with Ancient Amnesia. Josh Kintai is a good friend of mine. Um, my page is Angstrom Management, where I put all my astrophotography work. You're free to go there, download anything. There's no watermarks. You don't have to pay anything for it. It's all free. So, as I learn, download stuff and use it for your screensavers. But I don't mind. Thanks for watching.